So, if I can ask you to join me up here, Kevin, and enlighten us. much of too um, lower margin stuff? I'd say 90% of people come across do that. My clients, much less. So they, my clients generally tend to focus on a few small areas <laughs> and do well in those areas as opposed to doing that. But as I said, the common business owner, they definitely do that. Do more, deliver less, worse results, working 24-7. So, um, and then the last point. Who wants to speak now? Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, okay, no, I'm not making fun no, of anyone here. Yeah. I'm just saying that this is the way things go in the, in the real world. And unless you, unless you, and this is where the next point comes in. Unless no, you who take, wants to speak to the start of the next point? Yeah. <laughs> unless you take charge of your business, someone else will take charge of your business. And it'll often either be the ATO calling up saying, I want money now, you better organise it. <laughs> yeah, which it does happen, or we'll close you. Um, or it's going to be your customers. It'll be the guy standing at the counter saying, um, I need this out right now. I need my $50 job, even though you've got like a $15,000 job on the go. I need my $50 job out right now. I'm going to jump up and down and make your life horrible. And that's the person who's taking charge of your business, unless you take it back from the client. And hopefully they can spell. <laughs> Whose business is I know. Who's, okay, let's go next yeah, slide. Next slide. Moving <laughs> <laughs> on. See, that's where, and a very good question. That comes into the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> Just type it quickly. Um, so this is all about finding out, um, once you've been focused, what exactly do you love to do? Um, 
for me, I'm all about graphs and matrices and charts and stuff like that. So it sort of comes through here, as you can kind of see. I know, but everyone has to have their own little unique thing. So, um, so for those... Did you a file where you went out to dinner with them when you were little? Did they just give you a pie graph to quiet you down? No, I know. No, actually, yeah, I've got some funny stories about that, but yes, I did some weird things when I was a kid. Especially on the holidays, I used to kind of a porch now, how long we spent traveling on holiday. Um, so, for those who didn't like Cartesian graphs of planes and geography, I mean, geometry and stuff, um, this is a, almost an XY graph. So, cost of doing over here, it goes from having a low cost to a high cost, and what you love doing is, I hate it, I love it. So this quadrant over here is a cheap thing to do and you don't like doing it. So that's where something that's cheap to do, they can just outsource, like doing some basic graphic work or like getting a logo design from you know, just an off the side sort of logo. That can be done quite cheaply and I don't have the skills for it, I don't like doing that stuff, so I get someone else to do it, I pay them to do it. Or just basic administration tasks or letters and mail, that sort of thing. I don't want to do it, someone else can do it for me. Over here, the cost of doing things is quite expensive. Um, it could be some high-end processing stuff where I have to hire a really expensive employee, but and I don't like doing it, I automate that. So I develop some script, or I build something, or I talk to somebody who can build it for me, and I get that automated, so I don't have to spend my time doing it. Love doing, but um, not all that expensive to do. That's um, often um, accounts preparation, tax return, drafting, all that sort of stuff. I don't particularly love doing it myself because I've got other more fun things I like to do, um, but the cost of getting my employees to do it isn't all that high, so I get my staff to do that for me. And here's all the stuff that I absolutely love doing, I spend most of my day doing, is um, things that just are unique to me, it would be very expensive to pay someone else to do, because you can't automate it, you can't systemize it, so that would be sort of strategic planning, product development, a uh, little blue sky stuff, research into potential tax loopholes, that sort of thing. That's me. Right there. Um, sorry if I'm going to rush through this a little bit quickly because I still want to get onto the tricks and traps, but feel free to ask if you, want any, you, know, if you have any questions or want me to clarify something. Um, this over here is the, the urgent and important matrix, which I'm sure most of you guys have seen before. Um, so I thought I'd show you how I start my day by kicking goals. So I need, for me, I get very motivated by kicking goals striking things off my list and it gets me inspired to do the next thing and the next thing and just sort of snowballs on from there. So I take my um, work for list for the day or that I have on and I just chuck it into this little matrix and see what I should really be focusing on because like I was saying is it could be a $50 guy at the counter jumping up and down. He fits over here in the not important, not urgent to me, urgent to them maybe, not to me. Um, so they kind of sit down here in the, the trivia or maybe the interruptions side of things. So just running through what this, how this graph works. Over here is the not important section, up to important, urgent, not urgent side of things. Um, here's I think where most people spend their time during the day in just busy stuff, just getting things out that are being thrown at them, as opposed to trying to get proactive stuff done and small on that Karen, side. That kind okay, that's the for urgent. I mean, a lot of business owners, particularly in Richmond, relate to this. You know, you know, as a customer rushes into his business and says, urgent, I've got to have this business cut. Now, it might well be urgent, but it's not important. Mm. And, and then, well, well, no, not necessarily. If you ask most business owners, he'll say, is it really important to the, to the person who they think because it's urgent, it's yeah. important? And that's not the case nine times out of ten. Yeah. So they don't understand the difference between urgent and important Correct. and what is both urgent and important. Mm -hmm. So if the tax man rings up and says, give pay your money tomorrow or we're shutting you down, that's urgent and it's important. It is, that's right. And that's why if you start working on these sort of things, you can get out of that zone. So you'll hardly ever have anything just urgent and important. Because what you should be trying to do is spending time in this section over here, which is where I spend my time. And that's the, it's important to do, but it's not urgent yet. But if you don't work on this, it's going to cause a whole bunch of issues and then they'll become urgent and important. And then you'll be dealing with all these guys, and then be stuck in here. And that's just a recipe for disaster. Um, so it's going to be tough, um, you know, and I'm saying not, not to kind of make fun of businesses, but you know, even in personal lives, people are often stuck over here. And trying to transition out of that is going to be very tough in the, the first few weeks and months because you're going to have all that stuff to deal with, fighting fires, and trying to do proactive stuff, 
But if you can stick through it, it's <coughs> really great because then this will start to drop off. And then you'll be stuck, you know, you'll be spending a lot more time over here in the development side, having more fun, being proactive, and stopping these issues from coming up in the first place. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, it's, um, yeah. I guess, okay, you want to treat and you want to service your clients, but sometimes they're not right. So it's not, they're not always going to be spot on with when they're telling you that you know, we need to get this out straight away. Um, always try and help them out, but there might be a hurry up tax. So there might be, there's got to be some sort of penalty for that. You, you are in this like, Bridget. It's very interesting going on from your comment. People will come in and say, I need this, these business cards urgently because FarmFest is on, for example. Now, FarmFest hasn't snuck up, it's been the same time all year. Mm. But they haven't got their act together. Mm. They come along and they, they demand these things in a hurry. And the minute you tell them there's an uh, express fee, uh, to, day after tomorrow is fine. Mm. But up until then, <laughs> up until then, I had to have it now. I've got to have it in the next hour. Mm. So I can do that for you, but as a 20% surcharge, mm. when would you normally have them? The day after tomorrow. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. As soon as there's an expense, it's no longer important. So that's what yeah. I think. It pretty much what Kevin said yeah. about urgent and important. So important. So and, important. you know, on that point, how many times have you guys rushed around? And um, I think Richard's has experience well. You, you rush around and you're trying to do the right thing by the client, get the work out, right, it's ready to collect. I oh, can't come till Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so. I'm going to buy you a dictionary, seriously. Oh, no, oh. next slide. <laughs> So that's what I get my staff to do. Hey. Staff. That's what I get my staff to do. The low cost. They can't spell. check your spelling. Yeah, yes. I'm really tough to do. Capabilities. Check your spelling capabilities. You're. That's what you're doing, Brian. We know what Brian really loves, at least. So that's on his matrix. So that's fine. Um, so now to some of the more um, on, now we've gone through the theory about how you kind of set your focus and what you're going to do. Um, and go through some of the things which I particularly like and gets my day. Um, ticking along quite nicely, um, workflow management. Um, uh, so many businesses don't have any workflow software or management at all, um, or if they do, they might have an Excel table, um, which is fantastic. Um, for myself, I've, we've built a little workflow management tool and it works really well, we love it. Um, what do you mean by workflow management tool? Okay, sure. Um, all right, I'll give you an example, even just from my perspective. Um, a lot of accounting firms, <coughs> the client comes in and gives a whole bunch of documents to the accountant or to the receptionist. The receptionist then puts it on a table or a box or something, and then the, the, the staff just come and grab whichever file is there next to be worked on. And that's sort of their workflow management tool. Um, the owners have no idea how much work is or isn't in. Um, it's just a table of documents. That, that, that's terrible. Um, next step up would be somebody, a firm that has, it, say, an Excel um, file, and when the work comes in, the receptionist types in the client's name with the Excel file, and that's how they kind of try and manage what work is in. Not great either, you have issues with version control, and just, there's so many problems with that. What we have instead is that um, we have an automated um, sort of online database system. <coughs> where when, when work comes in, it gets logged into the system and then it automatically starts working out um, the time when it's come in, when, when milestones have to be achieved, um, who the staff are working on it, resources which are allocated to the task, all that sort of stuff. So we, we can track at any point where jobs are to and that sort of thing. So I know who's doing what, when and how, even if I'm overseas on holidays or at the beach or something like that. So I'm using my watch because I want to connect to the phone so you can just keep track of that's pretty cool. Um, I've also built into this that every person can just focus on their own tasks. They don't have to be aware of the, the bigger project. I'm aware of the bigger project, but each person can just focus on their set of tasks and all the meshes together. So that, that I consider to be a fairly decent um, workflow management tool. Yep. Yep. But um, yeah, I can. I develop them for a few other clients as well, so it works quite well. Um, Manage newsletter services. I know Steve and I think Richard and a few other guys here might be using, say, Mailchimp. I use Mailchimp just because it's easy. Um, it's got all the standards of bells and whistles. More Tony's it's built than very mine. deliverable, though. Sorry? It's not very deliverable, though. Deliverable. Yeah, yeah, you're not finding all of your 
emails arriving when they're supposed to. Oh, right, because it's yeah. stamped yeah. that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, once again, probably more tones filled than mine, but I know I've had better results by changing the words. So, um, yeah, some yeah, sort there, of... There's other programs you can use now that, I mean, Lumpship was free, got everybody in. Um, some people like it, some don't. Yes, mm. all, mail, all mass mail systems like that will have issues with filtration through recipient mail systems, depending on what you're using. Mm. Um, if you're using Cloud Mail, I don't know whether uh, Kevin does, I, I use Outlook.com. Outlook I find it very, very good at uh, working out what's real mail and what isn't. Mm. Um, I've transitioned off a client-based server-side mail, so Outlook on your, loaded on your computer, because those server-side mail systems, um, you, you get the full power of, of their artificial intelligence, whereas a local client, you don't. Mm. Um, it's not for everybody, but um, as you say, mail, MailChimp will have yeah. issues well, every day. Google, Google Mail, <coughs> Gmail just puts MailChimp straight into the... Yeah, yeah, yeah it, every it, time. Well, it, it will because it's probably a competitor a mm. product in some ways. Um, so, so there is a little bit of market forces applying there. But um, in, in, in essence, you, you always get some, some mail service like that, that that will for some reason get clipped. I call it getting clipped mm. and put into your... All you've got to do is just check your junk mail yeah. and make sure that uh, what's going in junk mail is actually junk. I have a weekly reminder to go through junk mail. Just if, if you've got a good mail uh, yeah. client, if, if, once you mark it not junk, yeah. it should be intelligent enough to, 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 to remember that flag so the next time it comes in, it doesn't put the picture. Mm. Yeah, but I think everything's going to have their flaws, whichever way you go on various yeah. things, it will have problems. Nothing's I think it's better than just popping things in the mail and spending, having one of my secretaries spend a day putting licking stamps, or you know, not licking stamps, but sending things out over the mail. Um, I particularly enjoy being able to track who opens what, when, where they click, and that sort of thing, so I can see who's doing what and um, you know, follow them up if they have a particular need. Uh, actually, something I forgot to include over here was my email branding. Uh, my email branding has um, click tracking and various other things like that, so I can see who's clicking where and what they've opened and things like that, which actually is quite helpful. So just a quick tip on yep. the mail thing. Yep. If you put signatures on your mail or include images in your, in your footer, that nine times out of ten will be the reason why it's going to jump. No. If you just keep plain text mail, so choose plain text rather than HTML mail form, most of your mail will end up going through because text is considered by most mail filters to be non-threatening. You can't hide a virus in text. Right. It looks so boring, but rather than not open. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes. That's, that's the compromise. I know, it's a bit of a compromise. Uh, you have to ask yourself there, if you, get, if you get an email from a friend, does it have pictures all over it? Um, depends on Doesn't it make it just a little sentence. bit more personal? Yeah, I, I like it. I like the pictures. Anyway. Um, also put this up on my website, so if somebody misses the newsletter, they're going to come up on my website. Um, bookkeeping, um, that's another thing. You, you can use a whole bunch of programs that have come out in the recent years. I particularly enjoy using Xero. It's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but the things that, um, that I particularly enjoy about using online accounting software is that it automatically pulls in data, pulls in bank fee information, so I don't have to, or my secretary doesn't have to actually be typing in. Um, the, the bank statements, which is awesome, um, and automatic data, uh, data collection. Um, so instead of having to chase your debtors, it can automatically be reminding your debtors to be paying. Um, and you can have increasingly um, more what's called firm letters going out to your, um, your debtors um, over the course of the month. Threatening. Yeah. Not threatening, just, just firm, very assertive. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, bookkeeping is just one of those horrible things. Nobody likes to do it. I'm not even. Um, How do you maintain integrity over the information? I mean, I've picked up seven mistakes by my bank this year because I actually get the accounts. Okay. The automated material is coming in. How do you actually. Yeah, um, I haven't picked up any mistakes yet. <coughs> um, I have, not on my personal stuff, but on client stuff, we have done big things. I think it's important not to just rely on everything that happens and just think like that that's that's perfect as it is. Always be not doubtful but but consider what information is over there and think, oh that doesn't look right or 
double check against a bank statement to make sure that the statements do balance or you know, the, the just common sense sort of thing. Don't, don't take this as verbatim. Um, that was the point of the question. It still doesn't help. Your automated systems still don't eliminate the need to do your Checks you still have to do a reconciliation, yeah, and the reconciliation is yeah. where you pick up your mistakes. Yeah, there definitely has to be elements of quality control. So it's not that we can just walk away from quality control and say it's all being automated. No, we still have checks and balances. <coughs> um, macros, VBA. Um, I guess most of you guys use um, Windows, and therefore you probably have um, Office running your computers. I think a lot of business owners use um, MS Office, Microsoft Office. Um, there's some amazing functionality within there which um, a lot of people aren't aware of. It's called VBA um, and macros. Um, so VBA is essentially Java or JavaScript, or more Java really. Um, so it, it looks really weird. It might just look like it's a totally foreign language. Once you understand the terminology, it's not too bad to pick up. And there are some sneaky ways to kind of get into the VBA code for you. But essentially, all that this is is that it's automating, you can get the computer to develop a little bit of a brain and getting it to do a repetitive process for you. So if you find that you're doing the same thing over and over again, you might be able to get the computer to do that task for you and just run it with it and then you check the results afterwards. Um, I've given you a quick example now, but do you have questions? Yeah, I want to know a quick example. I don't know, I honestly do not understand what you're saying. Yep, no, that's alright. So that's why I've got an example, um, which will probably have three spelling mistakes. Um, <laughs> So, going by averages. Yes, going by averages. Um, so I had one client, um, they were a franchise system, had about 20 different um, um, stores within the franchise network. Um, I found out that they were doing monthly management reports, so they would take information out of the accounting software for each of the 20 stores every month um, and take all these Excel files and merge them together and put them into a big master sheet. And, you know, it just was time consuming. It worked out that over the course of the year, it's 2,400 minutes that they were doing, roughly thereabouts. And so that's about 40 hours of working time. So <laughs> that was the, the underling of the CFO. It was a week of their time for the entire year. And um, after spending about an hour thinking about it, we came up with this and, um, and added the task in just no time. This click the button was done um, per month. So two minutes a month or whatever. Um, so that's, so that's uh, that is some code that you've put in an Excel sheet that will run a program. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, not everyone's going to do this, but it's making you aware that there are tools out there. Now, you might have to pay someone three or four hundred bucks to do this, um, but still, it's a lot cheaper than paying someone's wages for a week for the year. And this is sort of three years ago. It's been running ever since. So um, it's been, I guess, forty hours times three now, one twenty. So, yeah. Anyway, so there's a whole bunch of really interesting things that can be done. Okay. Um, accountability slash motivation. Uh, depending how you want it, um, I like having and graphs. Okay. Um, so it should come as no surprise that um, I like graphs and pictures and that sort of thing. Um, so I have a whole bunch of little graphs that, that um, this isn't my business, I, just, I don't want to show you sort of my results over here. Yeah. This is a screenshot of analysis, I'm not clients on the internet. Um, and um, yeah, so I have a little dashboard which is up on one of my screens and I can track um, how things are going between bank balances, uh, client interaction, jobs on the go, all that sort of stuff. Um, this over here is one of the small snippets so I can see how many jobs I've got on the go and who's doing what. But, um, but yeah, I think being accountable is, is really important. So what I do on a monthly basis, and I did it last night, so I print a little graph of, my, of our family finances and I put it up in the fridge at home. So if you ever come around to the fridge, you can come see our family finance graph. Um, honestly, my wife ignores it, um, but I find it motivational to think that I'm accountable to her anyway. Um, but yeah. Think. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yep, there are a whole bunch of dashboard systems you can use and that uh, interact seamlessly with whatever systems you use in the office. Um, but yeah, I think that's really important. Um, backups and version control. This is something I also find very important. Like Tony was saying about the viruses, um, every backup system has its limitations and problems. But I particularly enjoy using Dropbox. Um, I use Dropbox for business over here, so I have um, substantial levels of security 
two factor authentication, a whole bunch of stuff like that to try and protect myself as well as additional backups. But what I really enjoy is having version control in case a file ever gets um, corrupted or was a crypto locker the virus that comes in and says we're going to lock everything so you can't access anything in the past. By using this system, I can go back and check every single version of the saved file. So I can go, so I, okay, it corrupted here, yeah, I didn't realize it, but I'll install this one now. So um, a lot of functionality and a bunch of cost. Um, motivation wise, music. I often have music on during the day um, when I'm working along. Um, here's my a, a bad one of music I like, depending on my mood for the day when I need to get done. Um, but Pandora is a really great online free service. Um, it's free because you can listen to ads every now and again. Um, but it's it's a great service where um, who's heard of Pandora? Who uses it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you yeah. sort of yeah. On my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so no, it's great. So it's um, you don't get to necessarily choose the music you're going to listen to, but it gives you sort of similar songs to what you actually want to listen so to. Sounds Spotify and all that. Yeah, same. Slightly different. Um, that you have less control in a sense, but you say I want to listen to this song, and then it gives you similar songs to that. Um, and so it's been great for me because I've discovered so much new music. Um, which is a bit sad because I read these bands have disbanded 10 years ago. I'm like, oh, I missed their days. Anyway, but um, yeah, really good. So depending on if I'm going for a run or you know where the kids are listening, I can change it up to the Disney Channel. That's not my working channel. Um, um, password manager. There's so many passwords uh, these days. Um, it's really hard to keep track of of your various passwords. You have to change them on a regular basis and have really strong passwords rather than having the same password for everything. Um, so I use something called LastPass, um, absolutely love it. Um, it's still important to keep um, copies offline just in case it ever does crash or something. And um, I have multiple security steps to access the account, so I've always been really wary of, of you know, putting all your eggs in one basket. But, um, but this is really fantastic. Um, yeah. um, part of my blue sky, uh, blue sky time, I think I spend maybe half the day actually doing work work. Um, the other half of the day is more like thinking, developing, planning time, where it's just a lot of fun time. And so sometimes part of that fun time is just listening to other people's thoughts on various interesting topics with the financial chats or philosophy or TED talks or that sort of thing. And that I find sort of sharpens my mind up a bit to kind of think of, think of things in a new angle. Um, so I think that's important for my day. I book out time for just on development time, and that helps then with my work time. Um, so yeah, podcasts are a great way to do that, especially if you're driving or something where you, you can't actually you know, be productive working, you might as well spend that time uh, chatting with someone on the phone or just listen to something that will help you out. Um, I have a few remote access tools to access clients' computers remotely, um, which is quite handy. and. Uh, electronic signatures, I uh, really like this um, because we can now get customers to sign stuff online. Uh, a lot of my clients are traveling all the time so they can't actually physically print off something and sign and send it back. And also it automatically sends up the minus to sign things so I don't have to change up signatures and I can see at a glance. So obviously I've, I've blanked out the client's name and documents but you can see a full list of who it is that's been sent to what the document is and then it can send reminders and automatically does send reminders if they haven't signed things. I have a few clients which are really, really bad at signing stuff. And this has eliminated me having to follow them up, which is great. So in summary, and then I'm going to open up for three minutes of questions. Um, <coughs> focus more, look in spare time for general planning and thinking, and um, find out what you actually like to do and focus on that. Um, delegate, automate, and ignore the rest. And that's where we can help out, especially with this, the delegate, automate, and ignore the rest. And, um, Finding a passion is probably something you have to do by yourself, or you can kind of help out the process, or we can definitely do a lot of work around that space. Um, there's my details. But, sorry, I was hoping to finish up a bit earlier than that so I could take questions, but go for it. What questions do you have besides all the mistakes? Very good. Well, we are on the way. We did do a lot of asking on the way. Are there any questions? Give the man one question. <laughs> What's quite handy with it, Zero? I use two things. I use Zero and Receipt Bank. Um, 
great thing with Receipt Bank is that if I get a physical invoice, I scan it, goes in the Receipt Bank, and what Kevin was saying earlier is 100% correct. It used to take me probably an hour a week to input my invoices and reconcile with my bank and whatever you. And I'm, I'm not great at that, but I'm too busy, which is what this is all about, that Kevin was talking about. But that now, probably the first seven to ten minutes maximum, everything in my accounting is reconciled. I would agree. And, zero and, whatever. and the, the thing I like about it as well, if I have a problem, I can organize to ring Kevin, and Kevin can be looking at my zero, and I'm looking at my zero, I'm not trying to explain to him what's going on, he just looks at it, what I'm looking at, and says, do this, do that, and it's fixed, and I can don't know what's happening to it. Okay, so this receipt, receipt bank, are you saying that you're not actually entering the receipts, you're just taking a photo of them or something and then take, and it's just, pulling the information out of it? Is that I what you're saying? I just scan them and, and then what happens, initially when I started with it, it was a bit frustrating because what I'd always done was, because I'm a pain in the bum, if I get like one of my paper suppliers, I'll actually write down what everything has been sent to me because I need to know how much, personally I need to know how much I got a 300 gram paper and how much I got a 150. I just want to know that stuff. Nowadays, it just says paper, and initially that frustrated the hell out of me until I suddenly switched on to the idea that all I've got to do is click on a picture next to it, and there's my invoice in complete. So even if that invoice gets lost, I still have an electronic copy of it. Absolutely. And then when people send me an email, I just drop it into Receipt Bank, you know, an invoice email, I drop it in Receipt Bank, and the next morning when I go in there, it's already in, in Podio. And it's quite good if you set the, the, the uh, parameters, I suppose, it'll let it automatically allocate it to the department it belongs to. So if I get, if I get laminating form from Hilton Laminating, and every invoice I get from Hilton Laminating goes straight into laminating form. So I don't have to allocate it to which department I'm going to. Okay, so we could solve that, I uh, it just goes straight across there. So, oh, so exactly the, at the end, the end of the month, I can look at there and say, this month I've taken 15 invoices from Hilton Laminating, and it's all for laminating for them. Well, the, the downside of that, though, is that, like with Xerox, I have, uh, I have a number of different machines on Xerox. So if I get an invoice from Xerox, and I don't look at it in Receipt Bank, yeah. and make sure it's being allocated to the right department, it all just goes to the one place. So at the end of the month, goodness gracious, I'll spend thousands and thousands of dollars on, on copy costs on one machine, but actually I haven't, uh, yes. I haven't allocated it properly. Okay. But it honestly takes very little time, and it's, it's, it's that and the other system that Kevin's got, Podio, that revolutionised other things totally. Okay. I, I use exactly the same system, Zero and Receipt Bank, and zero. the reason why I got onto Receipt Bank was my bookkeeper, because I was, was complaining, I said, I hate fuel receipts, this was a little bug there. Go, buy petrol, you get the little receipt, yeah. fades, I had, I had to you know, scan it, upload it to zero, whatever. Now I just go, the lap on the phone with the receipt bank, click, take the photo, shoots it off to receipt bank. As Richard said, it's profile, bookkeeper profiles, it knows where it's got to go and the expense accounts, talks to zero. It's done. And I just chucked the fuel, now with trust, I just chucked a bit of paper in the bin. Receipt bank, is it? They're part of zero. No, no. it's an add-on. But I agree with Richard. I spend because uh, I use another little thing now called Toggle. I spend three minutes a day on average, um, first thing in the morning, just reconciling my um, bank account. Just going into zero, going click OK, click OK, which is pretty much what it is. Click OK, click OK, done. That's my accounting done for the day. Okay. I agree. I don't know about anyone else, but this is sounding pretty exciting to me. But at that, we are over time. Oh, and I'll just get you in frame. Kevin, thank you very much. No, um, um, No, that was good. I enjoyed that.